Join me as I embark on a mesmerizing eight-day adventure through the heart of Peru, starting in the enchanting Sacred Valley and culminating at the awe-inspiring Machu Picchu. We'll also trek to the vibrant heights of Rainbow Mountain and explore so much more. In this video, I'll guide you through my experiences in Cusco and beyond, sharing the breathtaking landscapes and the rich history that define this incredible region. May my journey inspire your own epic adventure to this beautiful and captivating country. After a smooth flight from Lima, I arrived in the ancient city of Cusco. This was just the beginning of my Andean adventure and I couldn't wait to delve deeper into the history and beauty of this place. But first, a driver from Taxi Datum was waiting for me, ready to whisk me away to Alantay Tambo, my home base for the next two nights. As we left Cusco behind, the winding road led us through the breathtaking Sacred Valley. Since our Airbnb wouldn't be ready until later in the day, we seized the opportunity to explore some of the valley's treasures. Welcome back to the channel, folks. Um, today we are in Chinchero, Peru. Um, Peru has been on the bucket list of mine and finally made it here. And for that, I am grateful. For now, we're just gonna see how they made the, the alpacas, how they take the, the skin and turn it into something more magnificent that you could wear. The weaving class was an interactive journey into the craft of the Incas. Watching the weavers create vibrant colors and unique textures with traditional tools was truly memorable. We also explored the textile workshop where we saw wool being washed, dyed and spun, witnessing the creation of a brand new alpaca poncho on site. We enjoyed tea shared by the weavers, adding to the warm communal experience. They just gave me some tea. I don't know what kind of tea it was, but I know it was stuffy. That shit done cleared me up, man. One of the highlights was the chance to purchase authentic Peruvian textiles at wholesale prices. After stocking up on beautiful Inca Valley cloth, we ventured outside to explore the charming town of Chinchero. Traditional wedding going on back here. We just walked into this. So we just left the Chinchero Awana, and now we're gonna go check out the Chinchero ruins and see what that's all about. Um, you gotta do a little bit of hiking, kinda out of breath already because of the altitude. It's not that bad, but we'll survive. Um, we just paid 70 soles to get us into a few places. It includes the Chinchero ruins and like two other spots. So. Let's go see what these places look like. We only stayed a short time at the Chinchero ruins before continuing to the salt mines. Renowned as one of the world's largest and finest salt extraction sites, Maras is a marvel of natural beauty and traditional craftsmanship. The salt mines near the colonial town of Maras date back to the pre-Inca era. Hundreds of salt pans decorate the hillside fed by a natural spring at the top of the valley. This spring discharges a small stream of water heavily laden with salt, which is diverted into the salt pans and evaporated to produce high quality salt. Each plot is managed by a local household, preserving the age old techniques of salt extraction within the community. Among the varieties of salt extracted here, the naturally pink salt stands out as a unique treasure. This blend of historical significance and natural splendor make Maras a true gem of Sacred Valley. Salt mines, massive. It was way bigger than I expected it to be, and it was a really cool experience. Up next, we have Marai, a hidden gem, tucked away from the main tourist spots of Sacred Valley. Known as the greenhouses of the Incas, Marai is an ancient Inca experimental farm shaped like a Roman amphitheater. Different levels of terraces are carved into a huge bowl, with each level creating a unique microclimate depending on its depth. The Incas used these terraces to research the optimal conditions for their crops through systematic soil grafting, leading to the cultivation of new species, including potatoes. Thanks to their agriculture genius, Peru boasts the world's most diverse potato varieties and is known as the motherland of this versatile crop. Even during heavy rains, the terraces never flood due to an intricate network of underground drains showcasing the engineering brilliance of the Incas. Marai stands as a testament to their ingenuity, rivaling the complexity of the more famous landmarks like Machu Picchu. After our Sacred Valley tour, we finally arrived at our Airbnb in Alantay Tambo. Behind me is our Airbnb in Alantay Tambo. It is the first tiny home that I'm ever going to stay in. 
Let's go see what it looks like inside. That's like a pull-out bed right there. This is like your kitchen and your sink and all that stuff. This is the bathroom. It's pretty dope. Little spot, man, for a tiny home. Oh my goodness. This shit is dope. And let's go upstairs. Oh man, that's the that's the bed. I got a moon roof and shit up here. I got a view out here. That's Nate little tiny home over there. Good morning, it's about 6 o'clock and we are on our way to catch the train to go to Machu Picchu. Something that's been on my bucket list for a long time is finally about to happen. When it comes to reaching Machu Picchu, there are several transportation options available. But for a truly memorable journey, I highly recommend taking the train. During our visit, based in the charming town of Alantay Tambo, we found it convenient to catch the train from here. There are two main train operators to choose from, Peru Rail and Inca Rail each offering a variety of train services tailored to different budgets and preferences. The journey typically takes between two to four hours each way, depending on your starting point and the service you select. For our outbound journey, we opted for the Voyager train, which offered an affordable yet comfortable travel experience. While no train takes you directly to Machu Picchu, the Voyager train provided a smooth and scenic ride to Aquas Calientes, the nearest town to the archaeological site. The train boasted decent seating and provided us with excellent views of the breathtaking scenery along the way. It was the perfect start to our Machu Picchu adventure. The train ride was about an hour and 40 minutes. And now we got to catch the bus to take us to Machu Picchu. I don't know if you can see the bus line behind me, but yo, this line is insane. Look at this shit, all the way back there. Upon arriving in Aquas Calientes, the gateway to Machu Picchu, Travelers must board a shuttle bus to reach the ancient citadel. These modern air-conditioned buses provide a comfortable and convenient journey up the winding mountain roads. If you're coming to Machu Picchu and you wait about 40 minutes, you'll pretty much get in a lot easier without that line. While it's possible to explore Machu Picchu without a guide, I highly recommend hiring one to enrich your experience with local knowledge. After all, Machu Picchu translate to Old Mountain and the site holds a wealth of fascinating history and culture. Josh, it's nice to meet you, eh? That's our tour guide, yeah, Joseph, welcome, for eh? our Machu Picchu hike ah. to the top. Great tour guide. Given its popularity, tickets to Machu Picchu can sell out quickly. Yeah. If you are not part of a guided tour, it's wise to book your tickets around 45 days in advance. Perched at an altitude of approximately 7,970 feet above sea level, Machu Picchu sits just below the threshold for altitude sickness, which typically starts at around 8,000 feet. All the high line, the Inca call Los Andes. You are in the last place, 1445, the last city of the Incas. But the Inca, the Spanish never come in. Machu Picchu, baby, finally made it. I've seen this thing like since I was a kid in books, and it's just great to be here to experience it and also learn so much more about the history and the culture of this place. Machu Picchu reigns as the crown jewel of the Inca cities, drawing millions of tourists annually. It's undoubtedly the shining star of every journey to Peru. Today, Visiting Machu Picchu involves walking along one of its designated circuits, regardless of whether you are exploring independently or as part of a guided tour. These circuits or set routes are determined by the type of ticket you purchase, dictating which areas of the site you can access. I wish I had food to give you, sorry. Yeah, just lama, eh? The best wool is bicunia, can it's I very expensive. Bicunia? Bicunia is a wild, it's very expensive. What kind of animals between yeah, they're it's similar alpaca to oh, small, yeah. small, but the hips like pretty good. This. Look okay. at the shadow. Enjoying the sun rays over yeah, here. That's this llama mm. alpaca. Yeah. Yeah. You love Be this cool. massage, huh? So in between. Yeah. You like yeah. this little massage. So just the hip triangle. Mm. Shauna would love you. In 2007, Machu Picchu was rightfully named one of the seven wonders of the world. Remarkably, Machu Picchu is the only Inca city that was never conquered by the Spanish conquistadors. 
Built around 1450, it showcases the advanced architectural and engineering skills of the ancient Incas. 1925 by American teacher, eh? yeah. 1925. This is the main entrance, all the Incas upper lower class. Yeah, okay. And remember the best time, yeah. all right? Don't come in here January, February, it's raining every day. Yeah. But the city doesn't fly. Yeah. Underground the city, 145 channel, all the water meeting here. Yeah. This is the main channel. It's just water the rushing down. Exactly. Okay. January, February, a lot of water. The only way to access Machu Picchu are by bus or by hiking the legendary Inca Trail. It's worth noting that helicopters are not permitted to land at Machu Picchu. However, visitors had the unique opportunity to get their passport stamped at this iconic site, adding a special touch to their unforgettable journey. A lot of information, but a lot of interesting information. These people were geniuses. Just the amount of mathematics and design that went into this place is amazing. As you bid farewell to Machu Picchu, be prepared for lines just as lengthy as when you arrive, though they tend to move swiftly. You'll hop on your bus for your descent back to Aquas Calientes, where you can catch the train to continue your journey to your next destination. Tell me about your Machu Picchu experience. It was really good. It was actually my first world wonder and I had a good time. Oh, Machu Picchu. Great experience. Unbelievably good. It's great to come to another part of the world, to share their culture to be reminded of the spirits and what we need to do to reconnect. So on our way back, we opted for the 360 train to avoid waiting until the originally scheduled departure time on our ticket. Purchasing separate tickets for the Inca Rail 360 train allowed us to return to Olantai Tambo a bit earlier. This middle class train boasts high, wide panoramic windows that offer breathtaking views of the surrounding landscape. Unlike other trains, the 360 train provides a unique experience with its spacious windows and glass roof, allowing passengers to enjoy uninterrupted views of the Andes, the Vilcanota River, and the stunning rock tunnels. It's a paradise for photography enthusiasts and anyone seeking a unique visual journey. During the ride, passengers are treated to a non-alcoholic beverage and a small snack accompanied by background music. Overall, the 360 train offered a memorable and comfortable journey back to Olantai Tambo. Leaving behind the charming ambience of Olantai Tambo, we ventured to the vibrant city of Cusco. Serving as a safe and splendid hub, Cusco offers a perfect launch pad for exploring nearby attractions. Our journey began with a visit to the heart of Cusco, the historical center. Stepping into Cusco's main square feels like stepping into a living tapestry where layers of history seamlessly blend with modern life. Here, ancient remnants of the Inca civilization mingle with Spanish colonial architecture, creating a captivating juxtaposition. As we wandered the cobblestone streets, we were greeted by the bustling energy of both tourists and locals, all immersed in the rhythm of daily life. The main square of Cusco stands as the epicenter of the city, boasting a vibrant array of cafes, art shops, and cultural treasures. It's a place where every corner tells a story, inviting visitors to immerse themselves in their rich tapestry of Peruvian heritage. After visiting Plaza de Armas, head over to see the 12 Angled Stone, an astounding feat of ancient engineering. This meticulously carved stone, integral to a larger wall, has 12 precisely fitted edges highlighting the exceptional craftsmanship of Inca masons. As you navigate the lively streets of Cusco, take a moment to appreciate this extraordinary piece of stonework. It's a subtle yet profound testament to a bygone civilization seamlessly blending into the modern city. Time to have some food. After all the walking around the city, we worked up quite an appetite and decided to try Greenpoint, a popular vegan restaurant. The service was excellent, the atmosphere inviting, and the food delicious. This place is literally a green point, bright and nicely decorated. A must try if you're looking for a vegan place. Another fantastic restaurant to try is Limo, which offers a delightful fusion of Peruvian and Japanese cuisine. The elegant decor creates a unique dining experience. I had the curry chicken, while Nate enjoyed the miso blackfish, 
and we were both thoroughly impressed with our meals. Located on the upper floor of an ancient colonial building, Limo provides stunning views of the gorgeous Plaza de Armas, adding to its charm. Just woke up at 3.30 in the morning. Was not feeling that. Look at my phone, it says 42 degrees outside. Not feeling that. But this is what we gotta do to get to Laguna Umante. So they're picking us up at 4 a.m. And I believe we gotta make some other stops and pick up some other people as well. So that's why I'm up this damn early. And I'm sure it's gonna be worth it in the end. If you're planning day trips to the attractions around Cusco, be prepared for a lot of driving. About eight hours in total, as most destinations are approximately four hours away. After being picked up, you might have a few more stops to collect other tour participants. Once everyone is on board, you'll drive for around another two hours before stopping for a 30 minute breakfast to fuel up for your hike. The breakfast options are decent and provide a good start to your day. Earlier we had breakfast and after breakfast we had to drive for like an hour or what felt like a little over an hour. Um, the roads are unpaved. Uh, if there was anyone on the bus that was pregnant, they probably lost the baby. That's how <laughs> bad the roads were. But now we're at the base and I don't want to walk this thing. So we're going to run a horse and hopefully make it up there faster. And the faster we get up there, the more time we're able to spend up there as well. You'll be starting at an altitude of around 12,000 feet and climbing to around 13,700 feet above sea level. So be aware that altitude sickness or lightheadedness could be an issue. Fortunately, neither Nate nor I experienced any problems. We just walked like, what, five, ten minutes? Yeah. And I'm already out of breath. So you know what that mean? It's time for the horses. <laughs> we got the damn Jamaican and the Haitian. Yep. About to take this horse right up Island there boys. to Laguna Umante. As you can see, Nate is racist. He specifically gave me the white horse and took the other one. That's racist, Nate. I don't know what you're talking about, Roger. Yeah, you're racist. <laughs> Riding the horse allowed me to fully enjoy the breathtaking views along the way. The horse can only take you so far, and you'll need to complete a short hike on foot. After the horsey, you have a, about a 10 minute walk to get to the top, I believe. <sighs> After about an hour, we finally reached the lake. I'm so glad I took that horse up here because for one, I wouldn't have been here yet. And two, I probably wouldn't have made it. Glad we made it up here. Look at the view. That's what we got up at uh, 3.30 in the morning. Four and yeah. You know, you don't get views like these unless you go through some type of journey or, you know, craziness to get to it. But it's a magnificent view. Peru is awesome. So considering I was on a horse, it was a lot easier than if I decided to walk up. At first, I didn't want to do the horse. So I felt like I was cheating, but then once I got on the horse and I saw the train, I definitely needed that horse. And I mean, it was great. The transition from the flat areas to the streams and then the rocky parts, it just all looked amazing. And then like the cherry on top is to when you go over the ridge and then you see this right behind you. This is just like breathtaking. Once you reach the top and see the magnificent Laguna Umante, all the hardship will be forgotten. We took our time to appreciate the breathtaking views. The landscape was unbelievable. The sun made the lake glow a brilliant blue thanks to the minerals and algae in the water. Swimming is forbidden to protect the algae and maintain the lake's stunning color. Towering over the lake is the enormous Omante Glacier, its presence adding to the awe-inspiring scenery. It was beyond impressive, unlike anything I'd ever seen before. I swear, everybody line up to take a photo. As you can see on the lines back there, this is where the, the photo line starts. And everybody wants their photo. So you do know that once you make it up there, you do have to come back down. I must say that going down is not as difficult as going up. These are our Brazilian friends. It's easy. 
Peruvian. Oh, Peruvian? Yeah. Oh, Peruvian. okay. Okay. One Brazilian. He tried to kill us, trying to give us a shortcut. <laughs> so the hike up, um, the altitude for me is really bad. So it was a very conscious decision every single step to continue onwards, but it was really beautiful. Um, up there, it was incredibly beautiful, but lots of tourists just taking pictures of themselves. And then coming back down, I felt kind of like frolicky. You know, I could breathe again and gravity was helping me. So that was also pretty nice. Overall, I would recommend it. But, you know, touristy things are a mixed bag. Before we continue, I want to express my sincere gratitude. If you're enjoying what you're hearing, please consider sharing this episode with someone who might benefit from it. Word of mouth referrals like yours truly help the channel grow. You can also show your support by hitting the thanks button below the video and tipping me according to the value you received from this episode. Thank you so much for your help and support. It truly means a lot. Now back to the video. Our final adventure in Cusco was a trip to Rainbow Mountain, another popular day trip. It began with an early rise and a long drive with a stop for breakfast before continuing to the base of Rainbow Mountain. We saved this hike for last since it has the highest altitude, giving our bodies time to acclimate. Thankfully, we didn't encounter any major issues. Another day, another adventure here in Peru. Um, right now we're about 15,000 feet above sea level and we're about to tackle Rainbow Mountain. I mean, I'm not feeling the effects of the altitude that bad. Let's hope, you know, the higher up we go, which I think we may have to go 2,000 more feet, we should be good. Um, gonna go get our ATVs because I gotta make life easier for me, man. I'm not trying to walk. So we're gonna get these ATVs and head on up to Rainbow Mountain and check it out and experience it for myself. The 35 minute ATV ride offered incredible views, making the journey just as enjoyable as the destination. My name is Shana Lee. And where are you right now, Shana Lee? I'm in Peru, I'm by Rainbow Mountain. And where are you originally from? Portmore. Portmore where? In Jamaica, beautiful Jamaica. I'm glad you're here actually. Blood clot, Jamaica, you can't get rid of them, eh? Talk truth, everywhere with it. Every blood clot with it. All over the summer see two of them. Really? How me know? The scarf. Have uh, Jamaica flag on it. All right, we're over there. Nice meeting you, eh? All right, nice All right, meeting respect. you too. At the top of Rainbow Mountain, standing at 16,600 feet above sea level, you're greeted by its stunning array of colors. These vibrant hues are the result of complex geological history involving marine, river, and lake sediments. Each colored line corresponds to different layers of marine sediments deposited long ago and transported by water that once covered the area. How was it getting up here? It wasn't easy. I'm proud of myself though, I only stopped to breathe once. Um, I made it the rest of the way, but definitely, definitely tough. Despite its ancient origins, Rainbow Mountain was only discovered in 2013. Previously, it was entirely covered in snow but the effects of climate change have revealed its brilliant colors, making it a must-see destination. I conquered Rainbow Mountain. We took ATVs most of the way and literally had to hike five minutes. But I ain't gonna lie to you, boy. That five minute was insane. I must say, fuck this shit, I'll take it. I'll take the picture from down here, but Nate pushed me and said, yo, you could do it. And I did it. That's the little hike you gotta do to get up there from when you come off here. But man, that little hike ain't no joke at 16,000 feet. It was definitely worth it. I had difficulty breathing, but worth it. I'm glad I didn't hike it, even though the hike is not supposed to be so steep, but still beautiful. Not only the Rainbow Mountain, the glaciers, all the other mountains around this is beautiful. Highly recommend it. As my journey in Cusco draws to a close, I can't help but reflect on the incredible experiences I've had. From the ancient wonders of Machu Picchu to the vibrant streets of Cusco itself, every moment was filled with awe and wonder. Exploring the gems like Laguna Umante and Rainbow Mountain left me speechless, surrounded by nature's beauty. But it's not just the sights, it's the people, the culture, and the warmth of the Peruvian hospitality that truly made this trip unforgettable. As I bid farewell to this enchanting city, I carry with me memories 
that will last a lifetime. Thank you, Cusco.